In today's video, we're going to be talking about a recent report from an NBA insider talking about what the Chicago Bulls could expect in a trade for Vooch or Zach Levine. We're also going to be talking about the preview for tonight's game against the Atlanta Hawks. This is your host, Rico Greenhow, and you have found yourself on another episode of Bulls Digest. And so it is game day. We are getting ready to take on the Atlanta Hawks. But before we jump into this preview, wanted to go back and talk a little bit more about about these trade speculations around the Chicago Bulls. Yesterday I was talking about uh, how the Chicago Bulls have a trading block that uh, doesn't just include Zach Levine and Vooch. Uh, it was Joe Cali that came out and said that the Chicago Bulls might be willing to move uh, Kobe White and also to Ayo Desumu. And I'm going to say this one more time. I do not think that you move Kobe White or Ayo Desumu. But uh, if we are looking at the players that could be possible moved and I think moved immediately. Let's start with Vooch. And so this is NBA insider Jake Fisher. He writes for Bleacher Report and also to Sports Illustrated. Used to work for uh, Yahoo Sports, I believe. And so this is what uh, he had to say. And so he's talking about the fact that he has talked to a, a GM and this GM has said that uh, Vooch could be moved for multiple second round picks. And so, you know, I think that uh, the Chicago Bulls really can get a little bit more out of this deal, especially if Vooch is continuing to play as well as he has played. I think that the Chicago Bulls could perhaps maybe get a protective first round pick out of this deal, uh, depending on what the, uh, the needs are for this team that's looking to get him. Because if you are getting Vooch right now, you're definitely trading for a player that you think is immediately going to help you uh, in your title window. I don't think that this is one of those situations where you're looking at this uh, as a long-term deal. I think that this is a player that you get over if you feel like he is going to push you out of the Eastern Conference, out of the Western Conference, and perhaps you're gearing up for, um, you know, if you're in the West, you're you're certainly gearing up for a team like the Boston Celtics. You're, you're thinking that you're going to need a big man that's going to be able to score inside and be able to knock down the shot effectively. And, you know, if you are, you know, coming out of the West, uh, then certainly you're going to need to be able to contend with the Denver Nuggets, uh, you know, the Timberwolves, the Thunder. So you're going to need a big man that can definitely stretch the floor there. And so I think that the Chicago Bulls can go ahead and they can get something a little bit more than a second round pick. And I do think that Vooch would be the first to be moved because of the contract situation. Uh, it is a favorable contract in the sense that, uh, you know, he is owed, what, 21 million, I think this year, 20 for the next year. And I, I think that that is a contract. Certainly, it's not going to scare teams away. Uh, also, too, Jake Fisher talks about Zach Levine. And he says that Zach Levine, maybe the Lakers could be back on the table. Uh, you know, with that situation, that is going to be a little bit tougher to move Zach Levine over to the Lakers. I know that there is the clutch sports uh, connection there. But, you know, for that to happen, certainly the Chicago Bulls would have to take on an expiring contract in D'Angelo Russell, which I don't think that that uh, would be a good move for the Chicago Bulls. And then you'd have to take on a contract like Gabe Vincent, too. And keep in mind, that the Lakers, uh, well, they're in that uh, those aprons, and so they can only send out and receive so much. So that is a bit of a tricky situation. Uh, and also, too, with Zach Levine, that contract as well. And I said this yesterday that uh, I feel like Zach Levine, he may not even be moved this season. It might be something that's maybe more realistic for next season um, because now that contract is a little lesser. And so speaking of the other players that were mentioned in this uh, possible trade, trade block scenario. Um, I think that if you were if you were serious about moving Kobe White and Ayo Desumu, I feel like those players could be moved just about anywhere, especially with the fact that they have a favorable contract. They're both very young players. And I think that just about any team would want to take them immediately. And like I said before, I just don't think that the Chicago Bulls should trade Kobe White or Ayo Desumu. It doesn't make a whole bunch of sense, especially if you're trying to lean into your your youth movement. And if you're trying to avoid not paying these players, that doesn't make sense either because at some point in time, you're going to have to play or pay these younger players, especially if you're trying to build a foundation. And so I think that Kobe White, Ayo Desumu, they have both uh, proven themselves. In fact, I think that they've proven themselves to be more consistent
consistent than a Patrick Williams. And so I'll say it again. If you're willing to invest in Patrick Williams, you had better be willing to invest in Kobe White and Ayo Desumu. And so uh, with that being said, now we're going to push a little further and uh, look into this game that's coming up against the Atlanta Hawks. And so, look, this is a game that I think the Chicago Bulls certainly can win. I think the key takeaway uh, for me tonight is just going to be this continued um, just continued, I guess, look into developing the younger players. I think that that is really the most important thing that we can take away from this particular situation is that we need to make sure that we play these younger players as much as possible. And so that means that I would love to see another 17 plus minutes from Modest Muzelis. I think that the best way for him to get out there and really uh, you know, become the player that he can become is to go out there and throw him out there in some actual NBA minutes against some tough players out there and see what he can do. And yes, I get that he's not the best defender. I get that he uh, doesn't have the best offensive game out there. But uh, one thing that he does do is play hard. And that's something that Stacey King talked about, uh, who in fact, he, he has been a coach before. And he said that, look, if he is willing to play hard, I can live with the mistakes that I'm going to get from Modest Mozellus. And I, I will echo that and say, I'm willing to live with that with any of these younger players out there. As long as they are giving me the effort out there, I'm okay with going out there and playing these younger players. And so as we look at the potential starting lineups for our team, you'll notice that Zach Levine is a projected starter for this one. Uh, according to the injury report and at the time of this uh, particular recording. Uh, he is a game time decision and is questionable. This was the game that uh, he was targeting as far as coming back. Uh, this is what Casey Johnson was talking about. And a little update with Lonzo Ball. It looks like the injury that he sustained to the wrist uh, might be a bit worse, uh, or I guess it's it's more concerning than it was initially. Uh, I think he's still in a splint and he still hasn't started to, I think, dribble um, with that hand and stuff like that. So it's going to be a little bit more longer before we hear something uh, else with Lonzo Ball. So still waiting on that. And then also, too, with Jalen Smith, he's still a game time decision uh, with the knee or questionable. And then we have Torrey Craig, who is questionable with an illness. And so those are the major injury updates going into this game um, with the high Hawks. Um, they don't have DeAndre Hunter. I think that that was kind of the main takeaway from the uh, from the injury report for the Hawks. And so, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, if Zach Levine is back, you know, just how healthy he is. Um, is he going to play the same amount of minutes that he has been playing? Is he going to be as effective as he was in our wins? Uh, I'm curious to see, you know, is he going to show some signs from being out rusty or being injured? So I think that that is going to be a key takeaway. Also, too, hopefully Josh Giddy can get back on track. I know he had a tough game this last game, um, certainly still trying to work through uh, the turnovers to assist and making sure that uh, hopefully he can get into the the plus on the plus minus box score. I think that that is going to be huge for us moving forward. Just him being uh, really efficient, being effective as he continues to just set the table for this team. Uh, Kobe White, we're looking for some more consistency from him. Um, like I said this before, and this is why I don't think you trade him because he is shooting, I think, a career high uh, in his three point percentage right now. And this is playing a new role. He's also gone up a little bit more with his scoring. Uh, defensively, I love how he competes out there. And I'm not worried about Kobe White figuring it out. And also, too, with Io. I love the fact that even though he's he's shooting like 17% or something like that, uh, I love the fact that he still comes in. He's super effective, and he has defensively been stout for us. In fact, as much as we talk about Patrick Williams, I think that Io has been more consistent as a defender this year. And so I think that he's been our best defender, um, to be honest with you, along with Vooch. And I can't believe I'm saying that. But yes, Vooch, who has uh, literally been in posters out there, but it's because he continues to keep sliding into the right positions on that back line and trying to give us some rim protection, even though that is not uh, his strength. And then with Vooch, look, he continues to have a great season. And uh, I've just led about uh, him possibly being 
traded. I think if he continues to play well and the Chicago Bulls are serious about leaning into this youth movement, I absolutely can see uh, where he is traded uh, before the trade deadline here. And so lastly, you know, with the Hawks, I think that I'm looking forward to seeing a little bit more of uh, Zachary uh, Rizache. I have watched a couple of his games uh, via league pass and I have saw that uh, he continues to get minutes and he continues to respond. I think at this point in time, he's up to double figures. And I think that he's getting more comfortable as he continues to get pl or get playing time, which is why I think just as a Bulls fan, uh, it's upsetting to not see Modest Buzelis get that opportunity. I think that that is the only difference uh, between, um, you know, uh, between Rizache and then also to Bub Carrington, Alex uh, Saar, like all these other players that are getting playing time, they seem to be figuring it out. And I get that their situation is maybe a little bit more more different but there's no excuse because the Hawks they're really right where we are as far as the roster construction and they're right there where they're like the the bottom of the middle of the east and like they really haven't done anything to this roster to make huge changes one way or the other and they're still getting minutes for their rookie and so I think the Chicago Bulls have no excuse in not playing Modest Bozellus and lastly I'm looking forward to seeing Dalen Terry, Julian Phillips, um, you know all these players that you know we just have question marks about uh, are they going to be huge in our, our building for the future and I think that they are and I think that we're starting to see that there's more and more that they can do but once again Billy Donovan has got to figure out a way to get these rotations figured out to where you're getting them some playing time and so that means that look if Levine and Vooch are still on the team, I know that you're trying to maximize their trade value or whatever, but you might have to cut some usage rate down because you still need to prioritize the youth movement. So with that being said, I will see you guys on the post game. Let me know what your key takeaways are, you know, about uh, all this trade speculation that we hear yet again around Vooch and Levine and this team. I know it just gets ridiculous, uh, you know, with just all these trade speculations and nothing ever materializes or really gets this Bulls uh, team in the right direction. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. And like I said, I will see you on the post game. Just want to thank everybody out there for liking, sharing, and subscribing. It means a lot to us here at Bulls Digest as we try to reach 5,000 subscribers before the NBA season ends. So make sure that you go ahead and mash on that subscribe button. It's about 64.2% of you that watch are not subscribed to the channel. And look, even though the Chicago Bulls may be at the bottom of the East, I don't know if we're headed towards tanking. I don't know if we're headed towards a play-in situation. Whatever it is, I'm really excited to see what these younger players can do because I know at the end of the day, no matter what happens with the record at the end of this year, it is going to be all about these younger players and how this team is going to pivot moving forward and hopefully we can become a contender again. So I'm saying go Bulls, and I'll see you in the post game. Peace.